Yeah, welcome everybody to the 22nd Cyclide Town Hall. Thanks for joining. We've got a few things to talk about today, uh, namely docs and how we want to improve, improve that for everybody. So, and then obviously we'll open the floor to, to questions as well. So let's kick things off. I'll share my screen. Um, yeah, so we have talked a little bit about uh, docs in the last few sessions and we really appreciate, appreciate everybody's input and um, sort of guidance on how, how we should go about things, but we just wanted to show you where we are and maybe get some further feedback, uh, get some ideas on on what to focus on. It's mainly probably about priorities now, like where we should spend our time, what you need most, that kind of stuff. But the agenda, yes, is to talk about docs, videos, tutorials. I want to be doing a lot more video related work. So making sure that you've got step-by-step um, -step guides to go through. I did one a couple of weeks ago. I don't know who's seen that, but I'll... Uh, uh, link to that again um and yeah just make sure you've got loads of uh, material that that helps with either building sites or promoting site live potentially to customers that kind of stuff and the second topic will be how we can do more community wise um less formal meetings that we've talked about before and just generally um enabling a bit more community uh, engagement and help Next up, we'll just uh, have a quick catch up on the roadmap just to show you where we are, reiterate the things that we're focused on and um, just yeah, talk about any, any uh, urgent requirements. Then just wanted to do a reminder on the module updates um, information we sent out last week, I believe it was, uh, regarding um, Google's changes to Polyfill, but we'll go through that shortly. Um, I imagine most people have seen that. And then finally, as always, open floor so that you can uh, ask questions and give feedback and discuss anything. <laughs> Good. So I'll rattle through this a little bit, I think, and then um, over to you guys and, and please do jump in on, on ideas. So we showed this screen last time where we want to sort of got a vision to overhaul docs and make them more consolidated, get them into the product as well, uh, make it easier for you to find the relevant information. So the sort of help toolbox on the right-hand side at some point mm -hmm. having having guides there and related information. That's going to be sort of phase two, which we want to show you sort of where, where we're heading. In the meantime, um, what we're really focused on is getting the new sort of docs set up, which are a bit more interactive, all in one place, and have some AI tools in there as well for search. I don't know if anybody's been using them much recently. We've kind of mentioned them because there's some good docs in there, for example, for the Flowbyte tutorial that we set up, how you get started from Flowbyte and CLI and Tailwind, all those side of things. So definitely worth having a look at all of that. And we plan to do that kind of process for as much as possible, really. So you have really good step-by-step -step guides and <coughs> all the information in the right place. And then we want to do a lot more um, sort of live and recorded sessions. So Town Hall is one we've had for a long, long time, um, but it can be either a little bit too far apart. It can be quite formal and structured. And I think it's nice to have lots of different types of sessions. And you guys have asked for things like workshop, more workshops, more sort of just discussions around a particular feature, um, maybe more on the coding side of a particular challenge or getting more out of GraphQL. There's like lots of different things that we could um, could do there. And we just want to make it a little bit more, a little bit easier to run. <laughs> um, doing it all through the town hall format can be, can be a little bit uh, tricky. A second to that um, would be sort of community sessions. The last month we ran the sort of first Discord session where we just had an unrecorded just chat basically in Discord. Um, it'd be great to get more feedback on, on how you feel about those kind of sessions, but it seemed to be a good way to just have a little bit more uh, flexibility on topics, can talk about anything, can deep dive into a particular um, uh, challenge if needs be as well. Then... Number five is agency sessions. That's where you guys can just book a meeting with me or with Matt, Matt Jones and I, perhaps Matt, Matt Walter and I potentially, um, to go through a specific, uh, challenge or actually just have a catch up, find out how we can help you get more from the platform. So always want to make those available as well. I'll, I'll, I'll clear my, <laughs> I'll make some time available in the diary for those kind of meetings because I want to catch up with you guys. And then finally, site gurus will probably fit into all of this, but, um, just, 
site gurus related content as well. So um, we've got the we've got site builder, we've got the new protect feature for backups. We'll talk a little bit about that in terms of ironing out any um, any issues there. But yeah, just generally getting that kind of content in there as well, so that you've got more um, helpful helpful guides. <clears throat> any questions on this specifically so far? Okay. What I think I'll do is I'll show you where we're at with the current sort of beta docs. I think it's a good time. <laughs> While we're not we're not quite ready, I think it's good that you can see it. It's all live. You can play around with it and you can give us feedback while we're still working on it because it's a lot of work and it makes sense to try and um, go a particular direction early. Like if we do all the docs a certain way and then get feedback that actually they'd be better done another way, that would be a bit of a headache. <laughs> so um, let's, yeah, let's leave it there and just jump into that for a second. So hopefully you can see, yeah. So we're now on the new sort of beta version of the docs. This will essentially consolidate all of all of our docs, it will be help.cyclide at the moment that's sort of more, um, less technical, let's say, and aimed at just features and UX <coughs> tools. And then we've got developers.cyclide.com, which is the technical docs. Um, we've got site builder related docs, and we have the API, which um, <clears throat> has all the different sort of endpoints. Eventually, we plan to get all of that in one place. At the moment, it's, it's basically the first three, but we're, we're still working through making sure everything's um, updated and as good as it can be. <clears throat> so first thing to sort of mention will be the navigation structure. So hopefully, again, we can keep working on it and, and with feedback improve it. But we've done everything in sort of a um, feature-based setup. But we've also got these little icons that kind of help you work out what type of content you're looking for. I think it can be really handy to know the difference between a step-by-step -step guide, which would be the ones here with the, um, the little checklist, and a reference document, where a reference would just give you like a list of tools that you can use. <clears throat> and then also things like just informational ones would be the light bulb and various different types of uh, icons and types of pages there. So the step-by-step -step ones, I think, are the the, the newest and, and hopefully prove the most valuable. Um, if you're going to look at anything, I would recommend starting with our, um, if you start with Steps to CLI, for those that don't already use it or, or need to get set up, we've also got down at the bottom, the new site builder related um, uh, docs and there's one specifically for setting up um, a site from one of our templates. So let's just go to that quickly. Just trying to remember where we put that one. <laughs> I'm going to show you the search in a second, so we might use that to find it. Um, let me just find this one quickly. Well, let's quickly give that search a go then. Um, up on the top right, we've got ask or search. So I'll show you a few other um, examples first. So for example, if we say, how do I add custom fields to forms? <clears throat> it will try and bring up content as you go. So if there's specific documents, it'll um, bring those up. But otherwise, you can ask a question. And what that will do is obviously AI, as we all know, is, is incredibly powerful and useful, but it won't always get things absolutely perfect. So this is only pulling data from the docs itself. So it is using um, accurate information as per the docs, but it won't always answer your question fully. So um, this is just an example of showing you the different um, outputs it can give, and then it will give you some more questions that you can ask as well if, if that one didn't give you everything you need. I'll just show a few more examples quickly. Um, how do I set up a site CLI? This might be the one that helps me find the doc I was looking for. Hmm. So it's again going to write out all the different steps. And there is a doc that's um, very useful for this. So the main source for that was this one. So if we go to here, this one's actually one of the 
the very sort of initial documents um, on on setting up CLI and. Let's search for Flowbyte template. So again, it's going to give you results in, in here, but you can also ask the question, but I found the document I'm looking for here. So if we go to this, this is the new style that I mentioned. So um, Matt Jones and I worked on this the last couple of weeks, uh, putting together a step-by-step -step guide of how to get set up from one of our marketplace templates. So a Flowbyte site um, with CLI and then um how to set up tailwind correctly because i think for quite a few people who use bootstrap let's say this is quite new and we haven't really ever fully documented that and made it a, an easy process to follow so i definitely recommend taking a look at this this doc and giving us any feedback on how we can improve the structure so um put together a sort of step-by-step -step video on how to go through those steps and and each each step-by-step -step process any immediate sort of feedback on what you've seen so far with the new docs? Cool. A um, few more things to mention then. Um, obviously, go away and have a play with it and, and let us know any sort of uh, thoughts. But yeah, we'll be adding more videos, especially at the top like this, to kind of introduce a particular feature or topic. Um, there's also a ratings feature down here, so you'd be able to give us feedback on whether it's um, helpful uh, or not, um, help us improve. In terms of suggesting changes, um, if there are mistakes or things that need to be added, this can be done via GitHub, but I think for now our recommended route would just be the docs channel in Discord. You can literally just comment in there, throw it in there, and we'll, we'll get them updated. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and then obviously the the search feature. I definitely have a play around with that, and um, we'll we'll keep testing and making sure it's working correctly. Now, this the the great thing about this, as we've explained before, with this new setup, is it's all run via GitHub. So all of these pages are in GitHub and they're versioned and everything. So what that means we can do is going back to the presentation quickly, we'll be able to move on to this phase afterwards where we can actually pull in relevant documents from the docs that are in GitHub into the, the portal itself. And we can do in-context docs as well. So we would show the most relevant um, uh, pages and, and items from the docs within the portal using the right-hand toolbar. <clears throat> so that's what we want to get on to next. Yeah, I think that probably gives a, a good idea of of where we are with the docs in terms of just what's coming and what we want to focus on. Um, guides, we it's tricky doing video guides because as we all know, things can get outdated as features change, but that is definitely something we want to do. So I think we'll start with the most obvious ones like something like this, and we'll work out how far to go with it and um, what videos to add um, first. Again, it'd be great to have feedback probably in the docs channel and discord in terms of what, um, what guides you'd like to see, what you're perhaps struggling with, um, what would be most helpful. Um, yeah, then just quickly on the topic of uh, live, well, sorry, just one last time, if anybody's got any sort of immediate questions on docs, do let me know, um, do, do feel free to jump in. Do, do you think we're sort of going in the right direction with this? Do you think it'll be more helpful having everything in one place and more searchable? For me, being new, uh, fairly new to site light is going to be really helpful. Yeah. Uh, so definitely. Great. Um, thanks, Steve. Cool. Okay, um, it's always a tricky one. I think everyone needs to kind of just, you need to just get stuck into it and have an issue that you need to uh, find the answer for first. <laughs> um, in terms of other sessions then, um, just going back to here. So in terms of live sessions, we're probably going to do, uh, I think we'll talk about this more, <clears throat> more in Discord and still get more ideas on it, but I would like to see us have Town Hall maybe drop back to something like, I think we've sort of started alternating now with um, a Discord meeting and 
we'll probably have other different types of meetings as well. So more information on that soon and probably try and get your get your input on how best to, to structure it so that it's as uh, valuable as possible. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, more sort of community sessions. And if you would like agency, just a one-to-one -one agency call as well, um, we'll send out more information on that. Um, yeah, I think just jumping back to the agenda then, um, we'll quickly move on to roadmap and then I'll cover the module updates and then open the floor to you guys. So roadmap reminder. Um, <laughs> John, last time I showed this slide, uh, I think you uh, wanted e-commerce discount goes a little bit higher up, but just to <laughs> yes, reiterate <I> there, <laughs> they're in no particular order. We oh, are okay. We are working on all of these um, and they are our focus at the moment. So if obviously there are other things that people mention and that we want to be working on and we are working on, but we wanted to highlight these as the main ones. I mean, just thinking of one, Nick, would be the um, sort of automated um, attribute uh, groupings <coughs> feature. That's that's obviously something we're we're working on as well but we just wanted to list the main ones so that's that sort of comes under e-commerce but um Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> but from the last from the time we sort of mentioned the admin panel customization everybody seemed to have very positive feedback about that and it it just opens up so many doors of what you could then do with the platform how you could lock it down for customers so that's definitely one it's i guess it's more of a luxury at the moment but i think it's really powerful and one we want to include I think probably one of the most valuable ones that we really want to, to get on with would be improvements to categories. So being able to add custom fields there and UX improvements such as uh, drag and drop, I think that opens up a um, sort of that extra um, dimension of, of connecting data together and working with data. And then also custom fields to other areas. I think we've seen a few recently um, to automations, I think was one of them. And there's just a few places where we could really do with um, custom fields. So we'll make sure we get those added in as well. Site builder update for building modules. It's uh, it, it's only really relevant if you're building modules, but it would mean that it speeds that process up considerably. So you can use site builder to, to go through that process of putting a module together. And then yes, e-commerce, a few, a few e-commerce ones, um, but to put it put it under here, the main one would be discount codes on specific products and categories. And then finally, that wasn't on the list last time, but it's been on our list for a little while and is now more important is the Zapier integration. So there are a few connection issues occasionally with um, Zapier needing you to reconnect. And I, I know it's a real frustration when you, Obviously, you set up an integration to to take the work off you uh, and for your customers, and, and it's important that data always gets to where it needs to be. So those we take those kind of issues quite seriously, or very seriously. Um, we're looking at those. We've been looking at those bugs or those reconnection issues for a little while, and it's a very tricky one to solve because it's it's intermittent and you don't always know what's causing that. So the, the long-term solution has always been to do our V2 ver uh, integration, which would be using uh, sort of instant zaps. So that's where Zapier would push directly into SiteGlide or um, something would be pushed at Zapier directly. So rather than polling, which is Zapier just sitting there waiting and refreshing and waiting for content, um, which requires the API and and is just a bit of a bit of a it's not the best way of doing it. We're going to switch where possible to using instance apps. There's obviously some types of data or action that don't really suit uh, can't be done instantly um, using the push method. So we will we'll do that where we possibly can. <clears throat> Um, I know Liz, you're on the call and rocks as well. I think you've had a few issues with it, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. But um yeah, we, we definitely want to work with you. I set up a new channel in Discord to try and talk through those specific uh reconnection issues and get mined out or or at least get switched over to version two. I imagine this might be where it, where there are some questions or uh, feedback. Anybody in particular want to mention anything related to roadmap?
Uh, I don't think so. I think you've covered most of the uh, uh, most of the things that are urgent or are pressing <laughs> that we've come across at the moment. So, yeah. well, that's always good to hear. <laughs> There's about to be something else that yeah. we've forgotten, but uh, I think we're <laughs> getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always tricky trying to balance and and pick the right things, but we, we feel pretty confident from the feedback we've had and, and looking at the, the roadmap itself that this, this covers a lot of the probably the most important and pressing ones that kind of affect you day to day or affect being able to build a site, but it's also some of the really nice... Um, widening of flexibility make it making the product more more powerful so um yeah obviously if we've missed anything let us know that there are obviously some others um for the later call i know that michael's been interested in sort of ai search and um sort of improved search for a while and that's something we're working on in the background looking at what platform os have done with um embeddings for example for for ai vector databases so that's those kind of things always go on in the background, um, but these are the main sort of feature or improvement um, <clears throat> priorities worth worth mentioning. I'm trying to think if there was anything else, but I think yeah, I think these are the main ones to mention. Anybody else want to mention anything related to roadmap? Okay, that's it's good to know. <laughs> Obviously, we, we're aware that there are other things, especially little ones, so we'll always keep using the roadmap and keep using Discord to, to jump on anything. I think a good example of that was um, just moving on to important module updates. Nick, I think you raised this maybe maybe a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, just as a sort of performance um, query as to whether Polyfill and uh, Cyclide.js in general um, could, could be tweaked to increased performance. So I, I think the question at that point was it runs on sort of every page and could we potentially reduce it or control how it's used? And then, and then yeah, um, the issue was uh, brought to a fall, wasn't it? Quickly. It was, it was. <laughs> and then Google decided they, they weren't happy with um, polyfill JS at all. Uh, I believe the reason was it was bought out maybe by a Chinese company or is owned by a Chinese company. And yeah. For one reason or another, yeah, they're not happy that it's um, good from a security perspective. Obviously, as soon as that happens, we would jump on those kind of things anyway. But because Google picked up on it, they immediately um, sort of affected people's Google Ads, as an example. So you couldn't run Google Ads if you had that running. So we removed um, <clears throat> Polyfill from, from the sort of default scripts that we have running and you will just if you haven't done it already just it's worth reading the the update we sent out about updating modules there's the system files one which is whenever you go into a site it'll automatically update that uh, module anyway so you find there um <clears throat> as long as you sort of go into each site regularly and then there's a few other modules like e-commerce that might just need need updating just to make sure you don't uh, don't have that that running if if you run Google Ads, for example. So it's definitely worth yeah, doing. It came regardless. from Google Maps as well. So I think it's anything Google, I think they're probably just running through bit by yeah. bit and flagging alerts to people off their different systems. So um so yeah, it's probably just worth doing anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Um yeah. It always makes sense to follow security recommendations and, and we've we've updated immediately to to reflect their their stance on it. <clears throat> And does anybody have any questions on that in terms of the module updates generally or, or making sure that you've covered this across all of your sites? It's always hard to know. We sort of send out the information, but we just want to check that firstly, everybody's seen it. And secondly, everybody kind of knows what to do with it. And, um, and we get these sites updated if, if needed. <clears throat> Good. Sorry, Luke, did you mention anything about automating this? Because uh, I'm assuming it would make sense for everybody to do them when they're issued. So generally, module updates are, I mean, they're easy to do, but we have to be a little bit careful because if people are using completely custom bespoke code on a site, then we don't really want to interfere with that. So we do leave that um, with you guys to manage on a per site basis. 
having said that, we don't want it to be one of those things that's a burden um, and having to refocus on. So um, it's, it's a tricky balance. So as I say, system files is automated when you go into the site. Um, uh, we, we could potentially look at an automation option um, and maybe pressing a button to turn that on, but we've played safe uh, for now at least and, and really just focusing on giving the information and it's a few button clicks if if you um, if you are behind. Just as I say, it's sort of worth checking your, your specific setup per site. So on, on some of your more complex sites, you might be doing something where you know that you've you've adjusted how e-commerce works, for example, and, and we, we just can't second guess that really. Yeah, cool, thanks. Would love to have, uh, you know, the, the right answer on that, which is yes, it's all automated and nobody has to do anything, but um, it's probably a bit too risky and we, we just allow more flexibility by by giving you control over that really. Hmm. I do think it would be worth looking at having an automation option, especially if you know you've just got a simple standard site that just uses standard site glide, then you could just keep those up to date and you don't run into any any update issues. So, I mean, something that springs to mind is, is WordPress. It's it's obviously something that is a bit of a negative on, on that side of things. If you have to keep managing updates and potentially you get vulnerabilities by not staying up to date. So we're very conscious and aware of not going down that route, but at the same time, got to balance it with giving you total flexibility to override what we're doing. <clears throat> Good. Okay, well, I think that's everything from me, kept it to half an hour just. <laughs> um, and over to you guys, really. Any any question, I'll stop sharing so we can discuss. Anything anybody wanted to raise? Hopefully that means we're, it's gonna be, we're doing it's gonna something. It's going to be a short one. It's going to be a short one today. <laughs> Yeah, the silence is deafening. In, in my defence, I've been on annual leave for two weeks, so I haven't got my usual lift. I mean, so. uh, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to that next time, Nick. <laughs> Although, to be honest, John handles uh, so much of that these days. I don't. Uh, it's usually John bringing them to the table. But uh, yeah, the, the, the guys have Matt and the guys have generally jumped on things as we've as we flagged them. So and fixed uh, a couple yeah. of issues with e-commerce and over the last couple of days and. Stuff, yeah. but they've jumped on it and fixed it quickly so you know yeah hats off it's a very them. different place to two years ago isn't it when oh, uh, we're all scrabbling to get to get stuff done but, uh, yeah 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 bit of a guinea pig trying to get some of those bigger e-commerce features over from bc yeah yeah, yeah good yeah. good to be in this position i think silence is <laughs> once a good At thing <laughs> <laughs> good rocks i think you might have wanted to ask a question Um, Hear me now? Yes, yeah, yes, good. Um, some obscure device was supposedly my microphone. Um, yeah, I probably just wanted to say that, um, um, yeah, the improved documentation and expanding that out, I think, will be really, really helpful. There's, um, you know, obviously we get a bit of help or a fair bit of help really through Discord. Um, and often what it just shows me is that just how how powerful the system is, but I haven't been able to find those bits and pieces in the existing information. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a full-time programmer though. And so, um, you know, some of the things, uh, yeah, I need a bit of a walkthrough on how to do them and those sorts of things. So, you know, if I look back, CLI, you know, I've done lots of command line coding or command line administration, those sorts of things in the past, but it's not something I commonly do now. Um, and uh, but now I understand CLI and I'm using it. It's um, you know it's it's sort of um, yeah it's fine. Uh, but that first steps in the water of those sorts of things. Same with GraphQL. Um, and uh, um, you know I'm I'm trying to do subscription of things at the moment, which the functionality is pretty limited. And uh, uh, so I'm having to write a lot of stuff myself. Um, and you know it's amazing what we can do with the system. Um, but yeah, the team there's had to give a fair bit of help, um, you know, to get me to where I am at the moment. So, so and certainly with, you know, from your perspective as a as a business, 
um, you know, wanting more agencies using Cyclide, um, easing though, and it's a different, it's not the way people are generally developing sites at the moment. So, yeah, the more you can make that um, um, that step um, into the Cyclide environment, you know, the better it will be for your business ultimately as well. That's exactly what I hoped, uh, yeah, I, I think is the case. And that's what we're really focused on is it, it's it's going to help everybody if we really uh, improve the docs because it is powerful, um, but you need, yeah, you need to know how, how to be able to do it. So, um, and, and I think that's where like, I do want to say and reiterate for everybody that if it isn't there, then we are definitely here to help and and in Discord. And while that isn't, um, you know, that isn't the optimum long term, we are very happy doing that. And hopefully, you get the sort of quick responses you need and and solutions because nearly it's nearly always possible uh, to do something. Just yeah, needing to find the information or or us potentially put that in place. So that's that's kind of good to hear in a way because that is. Uh, I feel very strongly that we need to focus on this and that we need to give you the right, not just the tools, but the the information and the and the guides and the help to to get there. So um I, I'm very keen to I'm still you can probably tell from today, like I'm I'm really keen to take that further and work out what would what the best formats and ways of doing it are. Obviously, docs is it has to be there. It's the most the most helpful one in terms of 24 uh, seven access to it. And it gives you the key information, but video recorded videos is obviously uh, hopefully helpful, but I still want to take it a little bit further than that and see how we can um, do more in a, in a, in an engagement way of things. So as a community, maybe helping each other, just as a community in discord, working on specific issues, it might not always be code related might not always be um system related even might be sort of agency challenges or this this polyfill thing as an example let's say it was something completely third party that we had no impact in it might be nice to be able to discuss one of those challenges and work out a, a joint solution so if anybody has any ideas of just how we can keep improving that and 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 making it more valuable the, the community more valuable to everybody uh, I think, as we all know from the BC days, the community was probably probably the best thing about BC, um, and and we want to make sure that's that's the case as well. Probably the only additional thing, I guess, with the documentation is is that um, um, some information around known issues and workarounds for those issues can be pretty helpful as well. So, um, um, you know, everything has um, bugs or foibles or um, undocumented features and um yeah it's good to possibly try and you know a lot of it's in discord but trying to find it in discord and all that sort of stuff and you know yeah so um yeah um that would be good does anybody i mean discord has and we tried it at the beginning has a forum feature does anybody think that would be useful to have specific topics that people can jump into i mean we kind of do it with threads in the different channels but it, does anybody feel discord while we're not moving away from it is there any way we can improve it to make it a little bit um more structured i guess I mean, I don't yeah. really know. I don't really know Discord well enough to to comment on it. I'm afraid. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big Discord user. That's the uh, that's the big challenge. It's kind of switch on when I need it and switch off when I don't. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a tricky one because yeah, I'm I'm not in there all the time. It's just when I need help. So mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we looked at a lot of different options, and I mean, Slack just doesn't have the same. Um, the same all rounded tools uh, as Discord does, so it, it it definitely feels like the right tool for us, and and we're pretty heavily invested in it now. So we'll keep working on how we can improve that. I think the right channels for the right things, not too many channels, um, and and just making sure everything's uh, easily accessible. I think we'll keep focusing on. Um, just a quick question there, Luke. So if you're talking about like, is it um like a chance to just drop things to a chat area? Is it where you can have get instant help from maybe somebody else is that the idea 
Yeah, I mean, we we have it. People are doing it already. So somebody will ask a question in general, like like you guys have with the Zapier one, and people will answer. But it's it's not very structured. And mm -hmm. even if you had it in a dedicated channel and a dedicated thread, it's still easily lost, like most communication tools. So the uh, we used to have the forum completely separately. Um, and I think there's so many benefits of having everything all in one place, all in Discord, but they do have a feature, um, let me show you very quickly, um, that would allow you to have a little bit more structured um, content. Let me show this. And this is the kind of stuff we just want to keep getting feedback on, like where we can improve. So down here, we, we've had it there for a long time, community forum, um, so code examples, Somebody might put in um, conditional workflow. Oh, I did this one. Let's go to something some, somebody else did. So I think Daniel asked a question about, has anybody used um, this tool? And people can specifically answer on that. And it just stays in this area as like a forum post. So you could create a post with a tag it's just a much more structured way of doing questions and answers effectively. Hmm. Yeah, I don't mind the sound of that actually. Um, can, could be useful, I think. Yeah. It's a tricky one. We don't want to create more things to learn for the sake of it. Um, but we also, if we look back in a year's time and all sort of go, well, I know it's in Discord somewhere, but I can't find it. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the docs. Uh, should should really be the, the place to go. But uh, we, we can experiment with this kind of stuff. And um, just as always, the, the more feedback, the better. I think Discord might be a good place to have the back and forth uh, whilst you're working something out. But then at the end of it, when you get the the, the final answer, then that should go into the docs where it is. So it doesn't, because that, that, that tends to be what happens. As you, as you say, you go back to Discord, so well, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. But, uh, and it's, it, it's it's threads and threads away or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah, totally it's agree. Always difficult. Matt, Matt Jones is, is fantastic at kind of staying on top of all of this kind of stuff and pulling it all together. So, and he's, he's doing a great job on the new docs. So um, yeah, for now we'll have that as our process where if we get to a resolution, we'll, we'll make sure that gets put somewhere permanent, probably the docs and um, you don't have to keep finding it in discord. <clears throat> okay. Any, any other topics anybody wanted to raise? Okay, well, hopefully that means we'll we should just keep keep plugging away at the the roadmap and obviously keep keep helping via Discord and and keep improving the docs. And I think if we cover all three of those, hopefully uh, continue to make your lives easier uh, and and help with building and supporting more well, building more sites and supporting more customers. Great. Well, yeah. Thanks everybody. Good to see you, and uh, we'll speak soon. Cool. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Thanks, Luke. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.